Good morning. Okay, we're going to continue dispelling some of the misunderstandings in the Bible. And where we left off yesterday is that the works that we do to strive to be perfect are filthy rags to true God because Christ was and is always the one and only perfect sacrifice. So everything that we work and strive to do to perfect ourselves is under a curse because the way to God is not perfection. It's forgiveness. Okay? So we are trying to create a picture of the true God. But first you must come out of the false picture. And one great falsehood about God is that he sits and judges. Okay? That is not a characteristic of the true God. He does not judge our works by fire. As scripture states that our works shall be burned up okay and that every man shall be judged by his works that is actually not the God over that judgment is the God of the fiery throne the fire okay not the God of mercy and forgiveness and love okay so we're going to find out more about the God of fire and here we are in the second angel sounded I'm in Revelation 8 okay the second angel sounded and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea okay cast into the sea a great mountain burning with fire. Now everything in scripture has to have a second witness. So we're going to find out what this great mountain burning with fire that was cast into the sea. We already know that the sea is the middle ground, the, the desert and the ocean, the dead sea. So the great mountain burning with fire is actually going to be the same mountain that's found in Exodus 19, right here. And Mount Sinai was altogether on smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace and the whole mount quaked greatly. Okay, this is the mountain on fire. It is the same mountain that's spoken of in Revelation 8, a great mountain burning with fire, okay? So a third part, right here, a third part of the sea became blood. A third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. And then the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning, as it were, a lamp. And it fell upon a third part of the rivers. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. Okay, what we have here, star is the root word of the word asteroid. Asteroid. So, a great star falling from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, could be an asteroid that has the, the tail behind it, okay, which appears to make it look like it's on fire. So we have a big rock burning as a lamp, that's an asteroid. And a big rock on fire is also Mount Sinai a great mountain burning with fire. Okay? It, it seems to be describing the same thing. Now, star in Hebrew is what it means is scorching. Scorching. 
And in the concordance, it also says under the word star, scorching, it says the sting of a locust because, I'm sorry, the sting of a scorpion, scorpion. A scorpion cauterizes the area that it's going to sting with a hot scorching. So we have the tail of the scorpion. And once you get to know scripture, you understand that if this is a star with a tail, a star with a tail burning as it were a lamp, like a comet with a tail behind it, or an asteroid with a tail behind it, we begin to see that this is could be like a dragon with his tail on fire. And this is why the reference to the third, because as we know in Revelation 12, the dragon brings down a third of the stars. Okay, we have to start to group these things together because they're all talking about the same thing. The dragon then is also related to Abaddon, who is the ruler over the locusts and the scorpions. Okay, so this mythical creature, this monster, the dragon, dragging his tail, bringing down a third of everything, a third of the stars, he is also the dragon, Abaddon, the locusts, and the scorpions. They are all the serpent on the tree. The serpent on the tree. And the serpent on a tree would be a worm on the wood. A worm on the wood. And of course, bitter in Hebrew means many things, but it means leaven, it means red dye, it means stain, it is a venom, a poison, a bitter substance. It's venom and poison. Venom and poison, okay? Wormwood is um, actually a, an alcohol, absinthe, and it's spirits. It's an evil spirit. Alcohol is a spirit, spirits, okay? So it's an evil spirit that's coming into the ocean and dragging down a third of the stars with it. The ocean is the middle ground where Mount Sinai is. It's not in Egypt. It's not in the promised land. It's in the middle ground. So Sinai, what actually happened on Sinai? Well, the law was given up there. The law was given, okay? So we have Sinai as the place the law was given. And now I'm telling you that it, a great dragon, Abaddon, locusts, scorpions, wormwood, and the serpent upon the pole, which is, of course, Moses's very staff. In Exodus 4, Moses's staff is a serpent. Before the, he gets to the house of Pharaoh, he picks up his staff and it turns into a serpent. And that's a serpent on a pole, a worm on the wood, a serpent on a tree. Okay. So where can we prove this? I should have wrote this in here for you. Is in um, Deuteronomy. I spelled it wrong here. Okay, so I'm going to show you where it, it, Scripture proves itself. that it is the serpent's knowledge that was given. Okay, so we have, we're in Deuteronomy 30, and it says right here, written 
in this book of the law. Okay, so Moses was given the law on Mount Sinai, and in this book of the law is given the knowledge of life and good and death and evil. Life and good and death and evil contained in the book of the law, which good and evil is the serpent's knowledge. The tree of good and evil, the knowledge of good and evil, it's the book of the law, is the knowledge of good and evil. Okay, so on Sinai went forth the law. And Sinai has a, there's a second mountain in scripture where the law goes forth from, okay? And I've got to get you the right verse. Okay, here we go. Okay, so the law goes forth from Mount Sinai. The book of the law contains the knowledge of good and evil. Sinai was on fire. It's the knowledge of the serpent. I'm sorry. Okay. One more time. Okay, right here. For out, okay, I'm in Isaiah 2, and it says, For out of Zion, for out of Zion, out of Zion, shall go forth the law. Out of Zion shall go forth the law. Well, we know that the law came forth from Sinai. Okay, that is not a contradiction. As we know, Zion can be spelled in another way. Okay, these are linguistically related. So the law goes forth from Sinai. It also goes forth from Sion. The law shall go forth from Mount Zion. Okay, the mountain of the Lord, the mountain of the Lord, Sinai and Zion. These two words here in Hebrew are, have the same root. They have the same root. Okay, Sinai is Sion and Sion is Zion where the law goes forth from. Law goes forth from Sinai and Sion, okay? And here we're gonna see some of our questions can be answered here when we see what Sion actually is. From, oh, we're in Deuteronomy 4, 48, from Arrower, which is by the bank of the river Arnon, even unto Mount Sion, right here, Sion, which is Hermon. Hermon. Mount Sion is Hermon. And um, I'm going to have to go to the book of Enoch here, but m most of you are familiar with that. And Enoch says, Basically, that the fallen angels, this is chapter 6 of the book of Enoch, which was an apocryphal book, but it's also mentioned in scripture. Enoch prophesied, okay, in Jude. Um, here it is. They, so, and there were in all 200 who descended in the days of Jared upon the summit of Mount Hermon, and they called it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual, mutual imprecations upon it. 
Okay, this is the story of the fallen angels coming down. Okay, the fallen, what we call the fallen angels. And the angels, the children of heaven, saw and lusted after them and said to one another, Come, let us choose wives. Okay, so they came to this agreement, this binding, right here, and all bind ourselves by mutual imprecations, binding, a law, a binding. They made this agreement on top of Mount Hermon. Okay, here's... I'm sure you guys are familiar with this. Okay, so what happened on Mount Sion, which is actually Hermon, might be a little different than our doctrines have taught us. Okay, so what we have in Revelation 8 is the coming of the law upon us. Okay, and what it does... A great mountain burning with fire. What it does, it's the sting of the scorpion. And it is Abaddon and his locusts and the dragon tail and the stars falling from heaven, which stars means angels. It's the same word, host, the host of heaven. Stars are angels. Okay. And they all come, came down. And it's called wormwood because it poisons the water with the venom of the snake. Okay. Now, we might get to this, but within the venom is also the healing. Okay? It's a vaccination. So there's some poison in it. It contains the virus, but it also will heal you. Okay, so Abaddon in scripture means, if you divide the word Abba, Don, it means father, and Don means judge. My father's the judge. Okay, as we know, God doesn't sit in a throne judging. He does not judge our works. Okay, that's not the true image of God. God forgives us. Okay, so we are going to go then to Revelation 13 next. And we will dispel the myth of the beast and the mark of the beast. And you'll be able to see all the mysteries here, okay? Okay, now here is our first clue. There's a beast rising up out of the sea. Well, what is that beast? It's the thing that just fell into the sea, the burning mountain, and why it has seven heads and ten horns. Okay, the way that I understand this is the seven heads are the, the Sabbath. And we already talked about what Sabbath means. It means covenant, Shaba, Shabbat, Sabbath, Shabbat. The root word is Shaba, which means covenant, which is a binding law, and captivity. Shaba also means captivity in Hebrew. Okay, this is the seventh day monster. Okay. This, this same beast, all the beasts can be grouped together in scripture. There's only one enemy, okay? And the, the ten horns that he has are the ten commandments. Upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. Okay, what we have to understand about Christ is that Christ came to nail the book of the law to the cross. Its laws and ordinances, which were against us, were nailed to the cross, and this is why Jesus came to defeat the Ten Commandments, to fulfill them. 
because the fulfillment of them is by love. Okay, that's all that's needed for, for Jesus' Father. Okay, so this is why Jesus nailed the enemy to the cross, which was the serpent, the devil, this beast. He nailed him to the cross. He also nailed his law to the cross. Okay, so let's see that in scripture because we don't understand these most basic things. Okay, here it is. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in the ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Bl here, what else did Jesus do? He blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us and contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. So the law, the book of the law, is what Jesus came to nail to the cross, along with its administrator, the serpent. This is why as Moses lifted up the serpent upon a pole, which is a serpent on a tree or a cross, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Okay? As Moses lifted up the serpent upon a pole, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Okay, so Jesus took on this, this sin and he went to the cross and, and died, killing the serpent. Here it is. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now, what is the serpent upon the pole in the wilderness? It's his staff, which was a serpent on a pole. That was what gave him his power. Okay, and Jesus came to defeat that whole image up at the cross. Okay, so the beast I saw was, was a leopard here, a bear, and his mouth was the mouth of a lion. Okay, and the dragon gave him his power. So we have a leopard, a bear, a lion a leopard, a bear, a lion. And there has to be a second witness in scripture. So here we're gonna find the second witness. Okay, can you see this? Okay. Yet I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me, for there is no savior beside me. I did know thee in the wilderness, that's our desert, in the land of great drought. That's our desert. According to their pastures, so were they filled. They were filled, their heart was exalted. So they've forgotten me. So I will be unto them as a lion, as a leopard, and I will meet them as a bear bereaved of her whelps. Okay, so these two people, characters, are the same. And then if we want to know who the dragon is, we'll go to Psalm 18 quickly, since I've read this a million times to you guys. Um, so date, this is a Psalm from David, and he says, I will call upon the Lord in my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him. The earth trembled and shook. The foundations of the hills moved because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and a fire out of his mouth. Smoke out of the nostrils and a fire out of his mouth is a fire-breathing dragon. There are coals under his feet. He, he, darkness is the secret place. Okay, do we see who the beast and the dragon is? It, it is the image of God in the Old Testament who Jesus came to defeat this image of him. Jesus came to nail that entire image to the cross and to let us know that's not the image of my father. 
the true God. That is why Jesus came. That's why Jesus came. Okay, so let's go back to the mark of the beast, okay? So the dragon had power to give life unto the image of this beast. Okay, we believe this is a true image of God. This wrathful, fire-breathing, ruling, reigning, angry God who's going to send us to hell. No, the God of fire is the God of hell, which is the beast, Satan, the, the back side, the wrong side, the darkness. And God is all light. God is all light. Okay, so he had power to give life unto the image of the beast and cause as many that would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. He calls all great and small, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand and their foreheads. A mark in their right hand and foreheads. Okay, and we're going to see what that mark is right here. A mark in their right hand and foreheads. Here it is in Exodus 13. It shall be for a token, which means a sign or a mark, upon thine hand and for frontlets between thine eyes. Here it is. Frontlets, that's your forehead. And token upon thy hand. You shall bind them, that's our law, for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. This is the second witness to the mark of the beast. It's these my words given by God to Moses. It's the commandments. Okay. So what is why, why is it that no man might buy or sell save he that has the mark? Okay, what is the mystery here? We can't buy or sell unless we have the mark. Okay, first of all, we have to know where the marketplace is. We have to know where the marketplace is. Okay. Here's the marketplace very clearly in scripture. Okay. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her. And the merchants of the earth, merchants, here we are, buying and selling, buying and selling, the merchants of the earth, the merchandise, right here. Gold, silver, precious stones, pearls, linen, purple, cinnamon, odors, ointments, frankincense, and horses, chariots. The merchants were made rich by her. They saw the smoke of her burning. This is Babylon. The place of buying and selling is in Babylon. Okay, Babylon is our desert. It's in the middle ground. So Sinai is there. Zion is there. It's in the middle. It's not in Egypt and it's not in the promised land. Babylon, Babylon, that area is in the middle ground. Okay, why can't we buy, why shouldn't we be buying and selling? Now you and I can buy and sell in Babylon because we have taken the mark, the Ten Commandments. We've taken them. So we can buy and sell. We can buy and sell in Babylon. First of all, Babylon is selling the works of men's hands. The works of men's hands. All these trinkets and toys and 
whatever her merchandising is, is the works of men's hands. The works of men's hands are false idols, false gods, false idols, false images of God. Babylon sells the works of men's hands, which are false images of God. Right here. The works of men's hands, wood, as in wormwood, and stone, as in stony tablets. Stony tablets and wood that became a book known as wormwood. The serpent's tree of knowledge. Okay? There ye shall serve gods. This is a false image of God being sold in Babylon. Men created their own image of God in Babylon. And we are buying and selling with them. We've taken on this false image. Because Babel is our same word. It means mixing and confusion. And it's the Bible. Okay, and why it's the Bible is because we have two images going on. Life and death, good and evil, blessing and cursing. Mixing. Mixing. The land of mixing and confusion is what Babylon means in Hebrew. The Bible, the book of the law, is the same thing. You see wrath and mercy. You see works but forgiveness. You see both sides. Choose this day who you will serve. We chose the wrong way. Now why God told us you cannot buy and sell on the Sabbath day. Well, we are buying and selling on our Sabbath day. On our seventh day captivity, we are, we are being held captive in Babylon. And we are buying and selling there and trading there the false image of God. We bought it. We bought that false idol. That false idol. We bought it. That image is not the correct image of God. The correct image of God is the one that Jesus Christ brought us. So you and I have taken the mark of the beast. Um, we bought and sold while we're in our captivity on the Sabbath day. Even though God told us, do not buy and sell on the Sabbath day. We do, just like the disobedient Israelites did. They are us. We are grafted in. Okay, so... All, all of it is a false image of God, and we are, God, uh, Jesus came to set us free from our captivity. The captivity comes in the binding of the law of the book, and we have not honored his sacrifice. We have made his sacrifice in vain. Us, we are the ones who do that by following the laws of the book. We don't steal, we don't commit adultery, we don't kill. That's, that's not the way. That imposes false ideas and false judgments upon other people. We judge people as holy or evil. That's not the way to God. The way to God is to love everybody equally. There is no sinner worse than you. And there is no righteous man better than you. That's not how God works. We are all equal under Jesus Christ. All of us are sons of God. All of us. Okay, these, um, these revelations are shocking, but I know now why we're going through them. The stony heart that's still under the stony tablets, we still have stony hearts. We need to shock our heart to circumcise it so that we can return to a flesh heart and come back alive. We're using shock treatment to come up out of the grave.